Presenting for Flint is Parnov Krishna and Carlo Charles. Come on out, guys. At Flint, we're building the batteries of tomorrow. Sustainable, cost-effective, and so much safer than the ones we're using today. Paper batteries. Now, this is our solution for a safer, more sustainable, and cost-efficient future in battery tech. But before I get into that, I want to tell you why we need them. Now, 84% of the world is powered by fossil fuels. That's only a 2% decrease in the past 20 years. 2% that has been converted into green energy. Now, when we talk about green energy, we often think about solar panels, windmills, and so on. But what we often don't realize is the infrastructure that goes behind enabling that switch to green energy. And a huge part of that infrastructure is batteries. But here's the catch. The metals that we use in our current battery tech are not only toxic, but very scarce as well. So if you run the numbers, you'd realize that recycling initiatives, while they're very noble, are nothing but a short-term Band-Aid solution. So if you want that 2% to become 20 or even 50% in the future, given how material-intensive our current battery tech is, we are never going to get there. So a dream of a greener future demands greener batteries. And that's precisely where Flint's paper batteries come in. Now, our batteries are rechargeable, and they work very similar to lithium batteries. But what we have done is to change the materials that we use. We have invented what we call hydrogel reinforced cellulose paper and utilize zinc and manganese as the two sides of the battery. And thanks to our proprietary tech and knowledge, we have unlocked three new features that you have never seen before in any other battery tech. Firstly, our batteries are fully compostable, which means at the end of its life cycle, you can throw it into the ground, and within a month, it would completely degrade. And that's not to say that everyone should start going around throwing our batteries, but it does make things a whole lot easier and cheaper when it comes to recycling, and that reduces the environmental impact significantly. Now, paper. You guys have it in your hands right now. You know how light and flexible it is, right? But this is exactly what gives our batteries an adaptive design. To prove our point, we have designed our batteries in the shape of the Singapore Lion emblem as well. Now, our batteries can be bent while operational without affecting its performance or causing any kind of safety hazard. So we went one step further to prove to you how safe our batteries are by even cutting them while they are operational, and it continued to function as per normal. It didn't burst into flames, it didn't overheat, or anything of that kind. Now, to see our batteries in your products, all we have to do is to stack up these paper batteries into the required shape and size, and we practically have a plug-and-play solution to replace any type of lithium batteries that are out there. Now, can we switch to demo? And what we have here on the right is a pouch cell paper battery. And beside it, and that's similar to the one you saw in the video, and beside it, what we have is a coin cell paper battery. Yes, coin cell. Now, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel to create this. We used existing manufacturing processes and equipment. And that shows you how production-friendly and adaptive our batteries are. And this helps us increase our market reach and adoption rate significantly. Can we go back to presentation, please? Thank you. Now, because of how abundant the materials that we use are, the cost of making our paper batteries isn't two times or three times cheaper, but it's 10 times cheaper. And that's a huge game changer, because think about it. If you're going to keep our battery on a two-by-two -two matrix against other battery tech, you'd realize that not only is ours one of the most sustainable options, but also one of the most cost-efficient options out there. And that makes us the most practical solution in the market. Now, how about performance? So we decided to jump into the numbers and compare against lithium batteries as the benchmark. And we use three industry standard metrics. And this is how our paper batteries perform today. And this is how we expect it to improve after one year of research and development. Now, one thing to note is that we are not just comparing here. We are pioneering. But given our current performance, we decided to come up with three versions of specialized paper batteries for a focused area of application so that we can either match or outperform lithium batteries in these areas. Because when it comes to cost and safety, we are already much further ahead. So when we want to increase the capacity and reduce the volume, you can start to see paper batteries in energy storage systems. And we are working with Collinson Powers, one of Singapore's largest energy storage solution providers, 
who even runs our airports, military camps, and even universities to make this happen. Now, when it comes to reducing the weight and the volume, you can start to see paper batteries in your consumer tech, wearables, remote sensors. And we're working together with a French pyrotechnic company to replace their batteries in their remote trigger systems for explosives. Last but not least, my favorite is when we try to reduce the weight but increase the capacity. And you finally have the dream of having green batteries in your EVs so that one day you can be driving an EV that is not only cheaper but safer and a whole lot more sustainable. Now, the team that's behind building all this has over 30 years of management experience and expertise in areas like material science, mechanical design, advanced physics, among others. And we have some of the top universities and governmental organizations in Singapore backing us up. Because at Flint, we want to be powering the future. Not just any future, but a greener future. And we want to do that together with you. Now, over the next three years, our conservative estimate for our revenue projection is at about 360 million. And that's expected to grow 20 times by 2030, given the new markets that we will be venturing into. Now, this is just a small fraction of the rapidly growing billion dollar energy market that's out there. So we want to invite you to join us on this transformative journey as we're looking for partnership opportunities and collaborative design ventures. So if you're ready to build that greener future, we are Flint and we are eager to connect with you. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Can I get you to stand on the other dot right there? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, Libby, start with you. Sure, um, thanks for the presentation. Um, so you mentioned cycle life, volumetric energy density, or, and um, I was curious, Ariel. Ariel. And Ariel, can you talk about the gravimetric energy density and how it compares? Okay, so um, what we're trying to do is like go against, not try to beat lithium batteries in their own game, but try to create a new market where we stand a greater chance of making a new market to go with lithium batteries. So in that sense, we don't use uh, watt hour per kilogram. Mm -hmm. We use uh, volume metric instead. And so. so we don't calculate by gram, we calculate by volume. And by that, it's basically the same thing, but we just use a different approach. In that sense, like the three numbers that I shared with you earlier, that's what we are using right now for our okay. research. Got it. Um, and the, the active ion, mm -hmm. which, what is the active ion? Zinc. It's, okay, the yeah. active ion is zinc. Yes. Okay. Um, and so are you then targeting, um, so some of the applications that you mentioned, um, gravimetric energy density is a pretty mm -hmm. important metric. Yeah. Um, so can you talk about how um, kind of not thinking about gravimetric mm -hmm. energy density uh, can let you target those markets, like automotive, for example? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you want to? So that's why we, we came up with three specialized versions. So our three different batteries would target a particular market specifically. So when it comes to EVs, we would ensure that we design our paper batteries with some tweaks so that it is much more effective in, when it comes to reducing the weight and increasing the capacity. So that's how we do it. So the same batteries that we use for EVs can't be used for others. Mm -hmm. So we, we just design it specifically for that use case. So that's how we kind of overcome that limitation that we have and turn it into a strength. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, to penetrate the market, our first two focus is energy storage systems and the consumer tech, which is retail, I mean, sorry, which is the wearables and the remote sensors. Yep. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Yep, Mark? How are you approaching discussions with a lot of the OEMs around designing their product in conjunction with your battery? Because I know that that can be one of the tricky zero to one challenges in a space like this. Yeah, so maybe I can take this. So as we so showed you earlier, the coin cell battery, now coin cells are a very common shape for lithium batteries as of now. So we can build our paper batteries in any shape or size. So you have a plug and play situation. Even if it's a double A or triple A or an 18650 battery, all we have to do is to design it in the same shape, use the same casing, so you don't have to change the way that your products are built. We just have to plug in our batteries into them. Mm -hmm. But they are lighter, they're cheaper, and they're much more sustainable. And that is possible because we use the exact same manufacturing process of lithium-ion batteries. So all we have to do is just use existing technologies out there, put in our recipes, and you can easily have a production line of paper batteries and just optimize the things along the way. Steve? For microcomputing and wearables, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, can we go back to EVs? Yeah. Uh, at, at Uber Elevate, the biggest problem for all of the OEMs mm -hmm. was weight of the yep. battery. Uh, not so much volume, but weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, it's in the air, it's not on the ground. Yep. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to some of your reference designs on what you think in concept mm -hmm. uh, the volume and the weight would be and then the, and then the power output? You want to take this? Yeah, sure. So in terms of the weight and volume, we're paper thin, so that means our batteries are actually lighter than lithium-ion batteries. So what we meant by volume is that since our batteries can be made in any shape possible, we're not restricted to like the pouch cell or cylindrical cells. Our battery could be embedded through the entire body of the car in the future. This, we're talking about the future of how electric cars can be. And that's one of the things we're definitely looking forward in the future, working with someone. Well, let's, but let's speak to EV tolls, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's in the air, it's aircraft. Uh, weight is a problem. So if you can speak to the specific specs mm -hmm. of what that would look like with your technology. Okay, sure. So uh, maybe an exciting avenue that we're looking at right now, we're actually talking with an uh, airline company that's trying to make, build el electric planes for the future. And the reason they can't use lithium ion right now is because it's heavy, it's not safe in the higher pressure. But what we are bringing is a battery that's almost half times cheaper than lithium batteries. And not only that, it's also so much mo modifiable. It can be the shape of a wing, it can be bendable, flexible, through the shape of the airplane itself. So these are all things that we're like in talks with and we're excited for the future about all of these things. Yeah. I'm sure you got this covered, but I have to ask this question on behalf of the audience, which may be wondering, paper battery, does it catch on fire? <laughs> no, seriously, like you, especially you're stacking them up. Yes. You, it's, you got cellulose that could degrade. Like, just help us understand the basics here. Okay, that's a really, really good question. I love that. And I just want to share that we're using cellulose paper, so it's not just paper, it's with extra fibers in it. And due to that, our batteries are actually fire resistant. So in that sense, we're actually much safer to overheating and explosion as so, well. Yeah. But if it catches on fire? If it catches on fire, like as we tested earlier, normally a battery is tested by like poking or tearing the battery, but we literally cut the battery while it's in operation and it's a quasi-solid material. So that means it won't, ex it won't like the reactive material won't go against each other and it will still continue working or the degrade, it basically the degradation will just enhance if you, cut the battery or make it much But even with heat, mm -hmm. it's still a biological product in your stack. Oh, yes. How does it not degrade even okay. with just accumulating? So the battery has to be sealed properly. So the, the compostability comes with when you put in the natural environment with sun, rain, and all those things. So if it's sealed properly, it should work as fine as a lithium battery. Sarah, quickly? Yeah, I was just wondering if you could unpack those revenue projections. What assumptions are you baking into oh, that sure. in terms of adoption on the wearables, um, EV, et cetera? Okay. Sure, so this is actually looking at the entire battery market, and we want to target only 0.1% of it for the next three to five years. So based on that, most of the focus would go into consumer tech and energy storage systems because we already are exploring opportunities and talking to companies in those areas. And when it comes to EVs, we still have to optimize a few more tweaks into our batteries so that it's more, you know, it can be used for EVs in the future. So mm -hmm. that's more of a long-term game plan. So that revenue projections is mainly coming from, that 360 million mainly comes from the first two market segments that I was talking about. Yeah. Thank you so, oh, sorry, we're out of time. Oh, perfect, no worries. Thank you so much, give them a round of applause. Thank you.